But let's get started with our one Detroit contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News, Stephen Henderson from American Black Journal. Hi, guys. Hey. We are at the Book Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, it's always good to be back here. You know, it's funny. We were talking a little bit about how this was kind of an anchor of the fine dining and development of Detroit what, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, was, no, I mean, if you think about how long this is now that this has been here, it's remarkable to, to think about the change that's happened over yeah. that time. This side of downtown right. was barren except for this when they opened uh, over here now you've got all kinds of other things and you've got the book tower about to, to to reopen as well it's night and day yeah this was the only game in town for a while and, uh, now you forget about it it's been a <laughs> I don't. it's been a year <laughs> i hear all the time do you have to get I you back here a little more often all right let's talk about um some things that are happening in the news um and i was asking both of you what was on top of mind and nolan you said mm -hmm. line five Pivotal, pivotal um, ruling from a judge saying that what happened in that lame duck session when they made that tunnel authority to build the tunnel for the pipeline, that that was indeed okay to go. And the state, Dana Nessel, saying we're still going to appeal that. Yeah, and, I, and as we write in the Detroit News today, they need to give it up. Uh, uh, this has been, this is the best solution for securing the lakes. I mean, obviously, it would be ideal if you didn't have to transport oil, but we do have to transport oil. And putting it in a tunnel 100 feet below the lake bed is the safest way to do it. It was a legitimate piece of legislation passed by the legislature, signed by the governor. And if you don't like it, your, your recourse is to go back to the legislature and get a new law or revise that law. It's not to go to court and try to overturn it on a technicality. And the, the um, Court of Claims said just that this well, week. Well, I, I think the fight's still going to continue here. And mm, also, sure. the Attorney General is, is raising a flag saying, um, does Enbridge, will they really even pay for the cleanup? There is something about a document, whether it was the U.S. subsidiaries that would say they would, as opposed to in Giant Corporation, which right. is based out of Canada. Right. There's still a lot here. Well, and that, hang on. Let me Steve chime in on this. Mm -hmm. we come back to you. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of issues to be settled, and I'm not sure that the Court of Claims should have the final say on it. I don't think there's anything wrong going up the appeal chain and, and getting a final ruling on it. I, you know, I, I think you do have to separate, though, the process here, which is what is being challenged mm -hmm. from the substance of, of the decision, which I think, you know, a lot of people would say is not the only alternative that we should have considered, that we should have thought about some other things. And I think there's no question from the standpoint of environmental safety, they should have taken more time to think about other alternatives and not just gone with the one that the company that is a polluter in this state wanted to, wanted to go with. But no. they passed the law, governor signed the law, and you're either a state that is governed by the rule of law or political whim. Well, the courts if you don't that. like the law, change the law. But to go in and say, well, the name of the law didn't match up, Every law in the well, book you could challenge. And, and I think that's, what, that's that. what he was differentiating between what we're fighting against, the, what the, the specific Process. law but, is But I'll go back to your point, saying a, a yeah. foreign company, that's the right. point Dana Nessel's making now, that right. uh, this is a foreign company country and we don't want to trust the uh, integrity of our lakes to a foreign company. It's Canada. Canada has as much stake as we do in the Great Lakes. Look at the map. Well, let's Their say, border on the lakes is as long as ours. Well, let's say that we don't want to trust mm -hmm. Enbridge because they are responsible for the single largest oil spill in fresh water in this state. That's and, why you're building and, the tunnel. Well, they're paying for Or you could say that they, perhaps that they've learned the from that. Well, perhaps they changed they safety measures or they're going to be doing more inspections. But we just recently learned that they were cutting corners on safety inspections and, and on reporting about Line 5 and that they have, have, have not been as transparent uh, as as they should be. If this were a better actor, I mean, somebody who had a track record of actually uh, cooperating with, with government oversight, with environmental concerns, I think there would be more reason to trust them. There isn't very much right now. Nolan. Protecting the lakes is the paramount concern. Putting that pipeline through a tunnel is the only viable options for a 100%, near 100% guarantee there won't be spills. You put that in tanker cars, you put it on the freeway in tanker trucks, you have a much higher risk of polluting the environment than if you put it in a tunnel 100 feet under the lake bed. It's a reasonable solution, negotiated and passed into law. Well, it's not it's just not about over. risk, it's about consequence, right? It's a spill under the water over. is far more devastating than anything that would happen on land. 